Uh, my name is Tom Walls, and I'm a professor emeritus from uh, the University of Iowa in the field of social work. Uh, since 2001, I've been the volunteer executive director of a program called Extend the Dream Foundation. Uh, EDF, as we call it, Extend the Dream Foundation, uh, was created really to carry out the legacy of a man named Bill Sachter, a mentally challenged man to whom I had given a job running a little coffee shop uh, on the campus of the University of Iowa uh, back in 1974. Bill was just a, a fascinating character uh, who I felt had carried a very important message for the world. That is, he had a kind of a, a beautiful inside insights that the world really needed. And so in 2001, through the Extend the Dream Foundation, we made two decisions. One, to commission another movie about Bill Sachter, uh, which has subsequently been uh, premiered and is making the rounds of theaters, uh, called uh, Friend Indeed, the Bill Sachter story. And the other was to create a kind of social agency, if you will, or uh, a program that would bear Bill's name and uh, remind people about the story and give us a, an excuse to tell the story. And uh, so the Extend the Dream Foundation began something known as the Small Mall, uh, Uptown Bill's Small Mall, uh, which co-housed four different small businesses that are owned and operated by people with disability. These are people with real disabilities. They haven't, a lot of them haven't worked for a long time. So there's an instant kind of uh, sense of, of worth because of the status of being an owner and having your own business and having your picture, your name, or a website uh, associated with you. Uh, so in, in, to that extent, you have a kind of an automatic way of uh, providing this sort of stimulation. But in addition to that, some of the businesses have done things that add to this kind of opportunity to change the conception of disability. Uh, one of the businesses is just to my left here where this camera is looking at me, uh, called Sactor House Media Productions. Uh, we do uh, um, publishing and we do some media work uh, but it's all by and about people with disability. And we have some fabulous publications, fabulous publications, that are uh, by and about people with disability. A good friend of ours uh, who was a volunteer with us for 20 years, a woman who has no local family, and who in the course of her lifetime, uh, you know, has kind of reached uh, a point where uh, body and mind are beginning to fade. And uh, she, she was just an incredible character. And at age 80, you know, she'd largely been overlooked. I mean, she was a wonderful character. People who knew her knew this, but the world really didn't. Mm -hmm. So we did a little bio sketch of her and a, a book of her sayings. We called it the Gospel According to Dorothy. Mm -hmm. And they're wonderful sayings. They're kind of street wisdom uh, that are of her own invention. And we published, had a lot of emphasis on the arts here. We're sitting right now really in a, a mini art gallery. And, uh, and a lot of the artists, well in fact all of the artists that uh, are um, exhibited here are people with disability. A lot of them have also uh, a second issue of substance abuse. And uh, recovery is a creative process. And we're really speaking to the fact that there are artists and poets and writers and, and others who struggle with uh, substance abuse, struggle with mental illness, and, uh, you know, really need to recover through their own art. Mm -hmm. And we're open seven days a week, 365 days a year. So we're always here for people. And you know, it isn't a bunch of therapists or a bunch of doctors, it's just people helping people. I started off in the mental health uh, business. Uh, I 
worked in a state hospital in Minneapolis and or in uh, St. Louis, and then I went to Minneapolis, and when the institutionalization was beginning, I was working, running a halfway house, not too different than what I'm doing now, except that met just for met just for an evening. Now we meet at seven o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night, uh, minimally seven days a week, and um, so you know that was my early experience, and then. You know, from there I kind of got into a different world in which I, you know, went to Peace Corps and uh, directed Peace Corps in Honduras, Central America, and came back to Minneapolis uh, during the civil rights and poverty rights era, and got very involved in being a community organizer and community action and, you know, going out there trying to save the world. And then eventually I finished a PhD and um, I had to earn a living, so I was earning a living teaching at the University of Minnesota, and I kind of liked teaching, and easy way to earn money, and, uh, and it gave me a lot of freedom to really actually do social work at, you know, in, in a disguised way. So then I came to Iowa as uh, director of the School of Social Work here and kind of have been here ever since doing all kinds of things. If you take the lady that uh, uh, we were talking about whose little book we did, uh, she's momentarily in a uh, skilled nursing facility, but we've kept her out of a nursing home for two years. We went over to her place, uh, the ecumenical towers where uh, elderly live in independent living, we pick her up, bring her here, we make breakfast for her. Uh, she sits here and uses it as like an elderly day center. She becomes another nice customer because she's really kind of funny and interesting. Her problem right now is uh, she can't get herself up off her chair. Either the dementia is such that she doesn't remember how to use her body uh, for leverage or that her she's gotten so weak in her knees and stuff that she can't do it, but we're going to experiment with trying to get her back, and you know it's costing her ninety-five dollars a day co-payment to be in a nursing home out of her pocket, and I can get somebody to hold her hand and get her up, dress her, clean her clothes, and everything for twenty-five dollars a day. If we could do this for all of the elderly people in those particular environments, we could really stretch out their quality of lifetime. I know there are medications that really help people to function, and I respect that. But I think that we have really made a mess of a lot of people's lives over the long haul by trying to use uh, sort of uh, an instant way of uh, smothering symptoms or disguising them. Or We really are drug pushers and we are enablers, uh, and the whole system feeds off it right now, unfortunately, with Medicare and Medicaid reimbursements. and Overtreatment is the name of the game, and, you know, someday we'll look back on this period of the way that we have worked with mental health and even beyond, and, say, and we'll say, you know, it was pretty barbaric. I have a book that I've just finished, or I'm working on still, I guess it's not finished, called One Person at a Time, <laughs> in which I look at the key people that have been involved in the sort of the Bill family here, and how much saving we make to this community by doing what we do, or by having other people do for them what we do, you know. And <laughs> now I have all these interesting characters uh, that are around here, and Everything is unpredictable and fun, and and there really is a lot of love that's expressed between people here. And so I get my share of it, and I give them whatever I can, and it's just a great way to go grow old. I hope to be able to keep my job here. Uh, I don't get paid, but uh, to stay as executive director of the Extend the Dream Foundation till I die, and uh, be a great way to go.